my question is where we are going in terms of transparency and democracy. And the short answer is, in my view, from bad to worse, <laughs> at least in the short term. But I suppose that I use the remaining minutes to discuss a little bit about why and how this is happening. And I'll start by talking about transparency, about openness. And we have the situation now that we've had the EU, EU, EU treaty, the Lisbon Treaty, in force for two years, a little more, since the 1st of December 2009. So we have some experience now. And if we start looking at the Treaty on European Union, right at the top, in Article 1, we find this treaty marks a new stage in the process of creating an ever closer union among the peoples of Europe, in which decisions are taken as openly as possible and as closely as possible to the citizens. This is what the treaty says. Let us now, each of us, imagine that we are in the role of the trusting citizen who has read this and who takes the promise at face value and start looking at how th things look when we start searching for information. So I'm not going to build theoretical castles, but I'm more going to, to go through what we find in the way of information. And during these two last years, we know that no questions have been more central to the economic well-being of us Europeans than the ongoing multiple crises in the Eurozone, wider Europe, and the efforts to contain the effects and to return to a path towards economic growth and new jobs. For the sake of brevity, I will go back only to about December last year and look at what our mainly heads of state or government, uh, especially in the Euro area, have, have done or said. Uh, their great meeting was, or great summits, where uh, on the 9th, 8th and 9th of December, when they announced two things, a new fiscal compact they were going to build and the development of stabilization tools to face short-term challenges. The statement itself contained some information, main points about what they had agreed, their common understanding, but no exact documentary references. There were no exact uh, information about what they they were going to do. They seemingly uh, had agreed, in principle, to do something yet again. Now we look at one of the, the players, the Eurogroup and its openness. Uh, we had the so-called Eurogroup which consists of the finance ministers of the 17 Eurozone countries. And its uh, remit is to discuss questions related to the specific responsibilities they share with a single currency. This 
at least, is mentioned in the treaty, and there's a short protocol which mentions it. And their meetings are informal, but at least it's acknowledged as existing, but it's an informal club. Then we had of late the Eurozone summits. Now on top of these finance ministers, we had the heads of state or government of the Eurozone countries meeting at summits. They just mushroomed out of uh, Sarkozy and Merkel and started happening. There's no legal basis for them as yet, but the fiscal pact we are discussing actually is going to introduce uh, uh, a reference to them. So they're introduced by an intergovernmental treaty uh, which will be signed on the 1st of or, or 2nd of, of March. So in a week it's going to have some sort of legality. Now I come to the question of good governance and transparency. And let me take you back a little bit to what we're discussing. We're discussing at economic policy making for the Euro area. There are 17 countries. There are 332 million people living in this area. Actually, it's more than the home of the US dollar with about 330 million people. And that's the imaginary world currency. So, uh, it's a huge project. <coughs> and what do we see? We have not only one, but now two informal conclaves discussing, as in a club, these matters, and then uh, telling people more or less exactly what they may have agreed. A byline a little bit is that already I think we're seeing a shift in the EU institutions. If, if we look at the latest months of the full European Council, you know the black cards and, and all the, the heads of state and, and, and so on, uh, going to their meetings there, the latest, uh, their latest conclusions have been a meaning. Uh, it's like, like the emergence of the Euro summits and, uh, in a broader sense, the Euro crisis has eviscerated uh, the, the full European Council. But this was more, more in uh, comment in the passing. Uh, if we look a little bit more at the European Council, these heads of state and government, I could say that, that it is a real disappointment in terms of openness. There are several reasons for this. Uh, let's say um, accountants follow the paper trail that already is used to. And uh, we have the situation where the input from the council configurations, you know, like the ministries, a little bit finance and, and competitiveness and so on. So uh, the input is not met by uh, in the form of exact proposals which can be discussed, but uh, in a sea of different kinds of input, uh, the heads of state and government uh, concoct their own conclusions, more or less related to, to questions of importance and interest 
and so there's no actual paper trail between the input and the output. There are, and there in between, we had the idea in the Lisbon Treaty that the General Affairs Council should uh, uh, be the coordinating organ before the European Council. And that would have meant that it could have evolved into an institution which would have made real, uh, open, publicly available proposals. And then uh, we would have seen the difference between paper A and paper B, the input and the output. But no, it has, it has kept a very, very low profile so that actually they just mentioned that they uh, discussed preparations for the upcoming European Council, and that was it. More or less, then they might, uh, in some cases, uh, adopt uh, regulation or something like that uh, on the sidelines. But but it's um, yeah, it's uh, it's just a formality because that too has been agreed agreed before the meeting. So so it actually is only only uh, let's say it only is a formality. So actually, it's a misspent uh, organ. The only thing it actually has started doing this latest times is that that it has um, somehow they have shifted uh, uh, the preparation of the long-term budget mm -hmm. to this uh, General Affairs Council. So actually it has one meaningful job uh, from the public's point of view. <coughs> but they tell us nothing about what they do there. Then I'd like to, to take you to through what we see about this Euro group, which is are more or less uh, hidden conclave. And uh, I wouldn't be only critical, because actually, recently, the council press office, the people working there, have actually now added a web page where you come from the council front page to Eurozone governance, and then you can click different kinds of information. And actually, they have improved presentation a lot. Presentation has improved, although uh, the same habits uh, uh, concern the, the, the Eurogroup. Let's say before the last meeting, which was of momentous proportions, we had one press release from the president, Jean-Paul Juncker, telling us that they had to postpone the meeting for different, uh, some main reasons, because of this. And then we had a statement with, again, highlighting some of the main points of, of, uh, of the agreement with Greece, but nothing more in depth. We didn't get the information about what they were decide, going to decide. We didn't get the information, uh, the assessments it was based on. We didn't get anything more than a statement with some highlights after the fact. And this is how it works. So this is what I'm harping about. That uh, we get no real information before the meetings. We, as citizens, are supposed to take these decisions on trust, however many billions. They concern. But the crux is that they don't really have a mandate for me. So this brings us to the second part, that is democracy. 
let me start with the good news. Again, we turn to, to uh, the treaty, which tells us that in addition to being citizens and having the right to be treated equally as citizens, that the functioning of the European Union is based, is founded on representative <coughs> democracy. And we can even read uh, the second paragraph of uh, uh, Article 10 to see that citizens are directly represented at union level in the Euro European Parliament. So this part is good. But then we come then we come to what I see as the problems. First of all, after this, the reality is that the European Union is essentially owned by the member states. If you try to do something uh, radical in European Union, you bump into the walls of the treaties, which are grotesquely uh, uh, detailed. So, when you try to do something exceptional, you have to go through a treaty revision process. That means that you have to have unanimity between now 27 different national governments. You have to have ratifications from every one of these 27 national parliaments. It has become more or less a mission impossible. So, trying to do something about the European Union in, a, in the way the treaties foresee is almost impossible. And that means that the, the, the nation states, they sit on the changing of the treaties, they control expenditure through the long-term budget, the multi-annual financial framework, because uh, they have let the European Parliament play along with the, the annual budget because it doesn't matter that much because it's in the cage of the long-term budget. So, so they are allowed to play, but, but not more than that. Uh, the member states limit the EU's opportunities to tax and to borrow for its policies. The citizens are not able to vote in or vote out those who govern. In short, the European Union wouldn't be able to become a member of the EU because it's not a functioning democracy. <coughs> so, in my view, the only real way forward is for the sake of the security and the prosperity of European citizens in a globalizing world is to institute a fully democratic union with accountable government, robust structures and needed powers, starting with foreign policy, defense policy, security policy, a common defense and a federal budget. That is the only logical and real way forward. But the, the chiefs of our nation states have refused to take this on the agenda. And most of their electorates have more or less fled in the opposite direction to some bygone base of bliss where nothing disturbed them from outside their borders. Thank you.